right, guys. Hope you're doing well. I hope you remember this uh, mining ice river box. It's been mining for two months straight after I overclocked and set it up and on January 10th. My last video, I looked it up on uh, YouTube. So on January 10th, I overclocked this whole thing to uh, different overclocking. I have 320. Actually, this is not even up to date. Uh, let's correct this. Uh, different types of overclock because not all of them could accept it. So I have 320, 300, 300, 320, 340, 320, 340 overclock. So let's take a look inside. What do we have here? Uh, so I have this. Uh, if you remember, I have this made this a little uh, diffusers in between each miners. What it does is basically. Uh, all the air here comes in and right into the miner from these fans uh, 5000 rpm that controlled by these uh, little devices the temperature control and I have this uh, one of these shroud oh look what happened I need to correct this one it actually went off a little alright so here I have this fruition design uh, Keith installed just one side only because if I install on both there are no big difference in temperature so I decided I'm just gonna keep this one here and I use the other ends for my solar mining here so this is my solar system here running 24 7 solar only I don't use any power right now because we have beautiful Sun here in California so Anyways, uh, back to my seven miners. I want to review them. How much cast by a mine in two months? They're pretty cool on touch. I mean, they're nothing warming up. And more important, we'll check the temperatures inside this miner. And what I want to do is also maybe in the separate video, I'm going to put this fruition design kit and run it with the kit and without the kit on my setup and see what the difference in the temperature but overall I think uh, my setup is pretty similar to those shrouds those shrouds is good only if you use it separate like this way so it's all set up just two miners here and no problem but in my box here it's perfectly set for the airflow and there is no even uh, need for this uh, kit here I just did it for testing that I could possibly, if I could possibly overclock more, but it didn't work. So it's my ASICs, basically my K0 Pro did not want to take nothing over 300 then. Uh, actually it's 300 clocks here, not 320. Yeah, so I need to correct that too. So on the 320 version, I am here on 300. So let's take a look after mining with uh, a little bit over two months. Uh, I started on January 10th and today is March 18th. So we'll look how much cast by mine mining for 24 seven for pretty much uh, two months and seven days, right? Eight days. So let's take a look on the uh, screen here. All right, so I was able to open all seven of my miners here in miner tools so obviously it's seven different windows so we'll just go one by one so this is my k0 pro one you could see the temperatures uh the board out 49 the chips looking good number two board 40 oh and by the way this is the um running on 320 uh as you can tell by clocks 875 it's for 320 825 for 300 version and then I have this uh, running 300 version also 825 on the number three with the same temperatures and also a um, little slightly higher temperatures here now keep in mind in garage now, now I have about 90 degrees um, Fahrenheit uh, temperature ambient temperature so it's kind of high so my number four running at 320 version also 50 number five 340 and uh, also 50 degree out 
and this is the one with the fruition design you saw it with temp temperatures pretty close to what I have on the rest of my miners because uh, they controlled by those fans and by the temperature so you could see all the temps are kind of around 50 49 to 50 this one the highest probably 53 but it runs also on f uh, 340 uh, gigahash uh, overclocks and obviously I restart all the miners when I disconnect the power I had to reconnect there was another project I had to change some breakers due to I'm um, running out of power and also I'm uh, reconfiguring my shed for the power so that's a separate video is coming out how I get rid of the extension cords uh, in my shed so now you could see this um, all miners I pretty much didn't really touch them it's the first time I opened in two months this box you know to be honest after the all the testing I've done uh, that's the first time I opened so it's been pretty stable mining on the pool I'm using hump pool by the way for these guys uh, so let's take a look on the hump pool we are getting quite a bit of average rate of 2.29 my calculation should be 227 so we slightly higher on 24 hour rate and like 15 minutes 2.4 one hour to 32 so i'm really happy with the with the hash rate i'm getting uh here on humble overall for all these miners because you could see it's slightly higher than the actual clock so and the rewards uh pretty much is the highest i think um technically getting right now for this specific miner even uh as of today you know like it's the almost only uh, my couple miners that is matching to what hash rate that i know uh, predicting here see 133 that's exactly like a mine with this 7k0 pro exactly um 133 caspa today which that was it's uh rated for this hash rate so really nicely uh running there is no issue with this case zero pros being overclocked and running in the hot environment even i was really surprised and so my solar uh those two actually running pretty stable and actually mining a little bit better than the um the never chanel so i don't know those two just on the hump pool being pretty pretty stable i think um i don't have luck with my ks3 and ks3m and bmks max on hump pool as much that's why i'm using k1 pool for those for larger machines but i don't know i will have to test it if anything changed after you know a month uh, when i tried last now also take a look on pyrene it's hump in pumping up pretty crazy when i updated just coin it's the only blue coins i have is solana and a uh, pyrene right here so it's just crazy to see how they pumping up here um so let's take a look at profit all right so i found the uh so i filter all my k0 pro just one through seven one through seven that i was mining since starting january 10th right here and i selected all of these uh, coins mined per day which i have all the record for every single day for them and the total comes up to 10,751 caspa it's right here so i added up to this formula uh, and it's giving me the total of the caspa mine so we're gonna uh cut this cell so we can go back and Put it next to the caspa price so let's select it all and here is our price in here so we'll just add it right here so we could see all right so we mine ten thousand uh seven hundred caspa with our ks0 pros k0 pro one through seven seven of those miners so they've been overclocked uh in different clocking as you see but total we're getting about 2.29 giga hash 2.29 actually tera hash not giga hash um, which is kind of nice uh, hash rate so we'll put here uh, the price in value of the dollar whereas caspa today is 13 cents it kind of fluctuating and dropped quite a bit so let's just multiply this two 
and we get in $1,400 mine as of today uh, with the Casper price today being uh, 13 cents, right? So now the power uh, for those miners is so let's calculate it's 68 days basically uh, since we started let's take a look at power consumption of entire rig here so what are we using we're using um, total wattage here right there it's a uh, 1460 watts 1460 watts it my cost for that electricity cost is right here right now four dollars and twenty cents a day a day and we'll get in basically these two numbers together that's our price so we spent 285 dollars for electricity from 1400 to 5 we're gonna deduct just this 285 so 1123 dollars after power with today caspa price so you could see guys this is our uh, number after two months of mining so let's take a look overall how much caspa i mined so as of today i mined total of 18668 caspa and after power value of 1972 dollars so that roughly close to two thousand dollars now let's take a look what have i spent well for a6 i spent 3300 and then duty or the customs tax that came in on this unfortunately because i ordered them in two or three per order and even though they shipped separately they still charged me those fees uh, and then I purchased the overclocked so altogether it's kind of costly it's cost me $4,700 so I'm still a pretty big way to go for ROI I need another $2,800 so it's not even 50% quiet there yet but uh, we're getting there so for how long let's take a look overall from November 26 but eight days it will be four months so not too bad I think overall but uh, yeah I'd like to see a little better uh, numbers of course but yeah based on the price that was for a6 it's kind of high especially with these fees if I didn't pay these fees it would be a lot lower I almost paid thousand dollar for custom so very ridiculous when the ice river sends those in the package of single order and they claim probably a higher um, cost of those miners so anyways um that's it for my update i basically want to show you that the miner working perfectly those that my ice river box it's still mining and hopefully we'll get to the point where we can actually roi probably gonna take another i would say a year at least if the price of casper will go up if it's not going up well we're gonna just stack coins and we'll see what happened right so too much as we predicted before so it's still it's around 180 so it's kind of stabilized there for a little bit for a moment until the large a6 is gonna come to the network so probably by april i think we're gonna see this hash rate start increasing so we still have time we still have another 17 days until the block reduction so we'll see how it goes all right guys well Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.